Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. A show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode, which was Louis Le Prince. <laughs> the magic, the movie man. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram. Remember when we used to do animations at the beginning of the show? Yeah, I was, that was fun when it was contained to maybe 10 seconds. Now it takes up about five minutes at the end of the show, so people just know to log out by then. <laughs> <laughs> also, we got some other things we're talking about today. There's a lot to cover, yeah, yeah. huh? We're, we're, there's our Gardner Museum update. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about Amelia Earhart. That's right. Because that was back in the news. She's bones. She's always in the news. Yeah. And her publicist is working overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the Gardner Museum would like us to inform you that you could go to this link right here if you want to learn any more about the heist. Uh, there's a lot of good facts there. You could see the actual artwork that was stolen. Uh, and it's, it's just a lot of good stuff there, straight from the source, not from this guy's mouth, because once it goes through this filter, who knows what happens. <laughs> it's useless. It's useless. It's the <laughs> shittiest Brita of all time when it comes to ideas. Here's a question. Let's start off with a question. Start off now. with a question. This comes from uh, Michael Vargas Cubero. Guys, you really, that's in all caps, should look into the Amelia Earhart update and post it into a video. I know this is not related to the video, to this video, but two days ago, a further study on the case using modern identification technology shows that the bones found back in 1940 in Nikumuroro are in fact 99% a match to Amelia Earhart. This was blowing up Twitter all weekend. We had a lot of people tweeting at us. Sure did. To comment on this. You'd think, you'd think Amelia Earhart found a ghost in her apartment with how many people were tweeting at us. <laughs> well, bad joke. Little dear David dig. Just I liked it. It was bad. Anyway. So basically the gist of it is, based on reports I've read, this is from BBC, which yes. is, I would, oh, consider, I would consider that a credible, trusted source. Yeah. Uh, this scientist took the bones that were found in 1940 that were analyzed by Hoodless. Before throwing them Before the, 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 the dummy that threw them into the ocean. <laughs> The most provocative thing discovered on the island by Gallagher was a partial human skeleton, as well as 12 other bones. Anyways, those bones were thought to be related to that of a, of a man, perhaps Noonan. And now a new scientist has come forward using the measurements, just the measurements. Just the measurements. And thinks that when compared to, uh, here's a quote from it, this analysis reveals that Earhart is more similar to the Nikumuroro bones than 99% of individuals in a large reference sample. Basically all the reports were just like, like, oh, the measurements say that it's a 99% match off of some undisclosed sample size, yet we can't really be sure because we can't compare them, uh, the DNA of the bones to her DNA because we don't have the bones because a dumbass back in the day decided, fuck evidence. But Hoodless determined that the bones belonged to a man who was short, stocky, and of European descent and could not be Earhart or Noonan. Unfortunately, after this conclusion, Hoodless discarded the bones, thereby preventing anyone from DNA analyzing them in the future. And, uh, and now there's a mystery forever. And that's fine, we'll just have to live with it. She seemed like a great lady, but even great ladies sometimes get eaten by crabs. How about we take it over to Gramtown? Let's do it. Mayoys. That jerk Edison electrocuted elephants and whatnot because he wanted to scare people away from the use of te Tesla's alternating current. So I don't think it's far-fetched to believe that he was behind Louis, Louis Le Prince's disappearance. What a douche. <laughs> Edison was a notoriously vile man. Hmm? There's a lot to suggest that he didn't even invent the light bulb. He stole it from maybe 20 or so people that invented it before him. He was a salesman. He knew how to brand things. He was like uh, like that Shamwell guy. Yeah. <laughs> I read something about, I don't know if it's true, where he didn't really know how to work an x-ray, but he wanted to kind of jump on the train. And then as a result, some of his workers got uh, infected with radiation poisoning and had to amputate a bunch of their limbs. Oh, oh. Uh, here's the thing, I'm not here to just shit on Thomas Edison I just, and slander I am. his name. I'm fine. But if you were to just do a little bit of reading on Thomas Edison, yeah, the internet would do plenty of shitting for me. He straight up murdered that elephant. Do you think Edison to this day has goons? Like, oh, he's got goons. Well, I mean, like he's, he's probably he's has like have great, family. great goon children. This comes from Facebook from Vasti Karina Flores. For Q and A, has Ryan addressed his secondary career as Bruno Mars's backup dancer? <laughs> it is alarming. Uh, there's a picture. I don't know if we could actually show it legally. If we can, I'll show it right now. <laughs> 
I'm gonna be honest, if I saw this, I would think that's me if I, if I didn't remember I took this picture. Now, you may not be aware of this, but every now and then, um, I think you sort of black out and become someone named Ricky Goldsworth. Who's Ricky Goldsworth? I know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to you. What if you also sometimes black out and become this other person who is a backup dancer for Bruno Mars? I don't know what you're talking about. Troubling. Keep your mouth shut, long legs. Here's from N. Meta. No aliens in this episode either? What's going on, Ryan? Yeah, I would say that I usually will put in an alien theory when I do find it plausible. When there's something about the true crime case that is so out of left field that there need, it warrants the possibility of aliens. In this case, a uh, dude stepped on a train. I feel like if an alien ship were to come and abduct him when he's on this train, a fair amount of people on the train would see it. You know what's suddenly exciting to me though? The thought of a UFO sort of matching the speed of a train. The aliens kind of throwing a hook down, sliding down oh, on like a Like a cowboy train robbery? Yeah, it's like but it's aliens. That is pretty cool. Somebody write that. Pitch yeah. it to Warner Brothers or something. Now that you say it, I wonder why I didn't put that as a theory. Yeah, see now you're into it. No, I was. that was a joke. I'm, there's no way I'm gonna... Oh, I it's have... hard for me to tell sometimes. Oh yeah, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Facebook, this is... Gabby uh, Paul Hummus. You guys missed a clear explanation. His assistant's last name was Mason, as in Freemason. It was an inside job. The Masons didn't want the technology getting out when they didn't have control of the inventor the way they did with Edison. Hashtag BuzzFeed solved. <laughs> it's rumored, and I don't know if it's confirmed, that Louis Le Prince was in fact a Freemason. Interesting. I don't think that means anything. It seems like if you're looking at the Freemason Illuminati MO, right? They uh -huh. want their people to ascend to positions of power sure. so that they could have influence on the culture of the world. Why wouldn't they want this guy to be, uh, become one of the most famous people in the world, have an invention that literally changes the world, and then, you know, have him as a big puppet man? Unless they've already got Edison under their thumb. This didn't happen, by the way, but if it, if it, if this is all hypothetical. It's all baloney. Back on over to Graham City. Here's from It's Alfie. Pickles or potatoes? The, what the fuck? A fun, just a fun off topic cue. Uh, potatoes. I mean, that's not really a question, right? Do you realize how much you eat potatoes? Yes, but I do like a pickle. Okay. I'm gonna go potato. I'm glad, I'm glad you came to your senses there. We both agree on potatoes. There we go. Spud buds. Spud buds. Good stuff. This one comes from uh, Facebook from Maria Zambrana. I found a, this is, this looks like she actually did some legit research here, which is, which is nice. I found a 1907 New York suppl supplement that reads in part, quote, while the car was still moving so smoothly and quietly along, the plaintiff supposed it had stopped. The plaintiff stepped, the plaintiff stepped off and was thrown down and injured, end quote. Due to less than diligent t uh, train attendants not noticing people either drunkenly, carelessly, or sleepily would step off smooth riding trains that don't have today's safety measures, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that Le Prince did the same, waking up in a panic and thinking that he'd missed his stop and his body was either unidentified, say if he fell into water and wasn't found for a week or two, hidden by a thief who stripped him of anything valuable slash useful, or mistaken for that of a dead vagrant if a homeless person swapped clothes with the body. Sadly, the briefcase and its contents, no doubt confusingly technical in nature to the average person, were probably just disposed of. Zambrana! So she's just saying that a lot of people fell off trains back in the day. <sighs> Zambrana's doing the work. We only looked at him being falling off the train as an act of suicide, right? Yeah. Of an act of his own doing. Trains are... We yeah. didn't look at it as like, oh, he accidentally fell off the train. Could happen. He doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that would go over to the opening of the train to check to see if the train is still moving. I don't know what trains were like back then. It's hard to I, say. I don't know. I mean, sure. Is it plausible that he may have just accidentally fell off the train? Maybe. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I just don't think it's very likely, to be honest. But it's a, it's worth mentioning. I think it's a good cue. So uh, this one comes from Twitter. We haven't done one of these in a while. Someone tweeted this at me. Uh, a man named Will Snyder, at 8-Bit Actor. Uh, I'll just say the tweet. Uh, hey, Ryan Espergara and Shalix Endage. 
<laughs> I'm a direct descendant of Louis Le Prince. Thank you so much for doing an episode on him. Ever since I was a kid, I've told everyone I knew that my great, great, great grandfather was the actual inventor of the motion picture camera. Our family pretty much believes that Louis got off the train in Paris, took a wrong turn and was mugged and murdered. Simple as that, no conspiracy. Thanks again for this episode. Hashtag BuzzFeed Unsolved, Ryan S. Bergara and Shane. Wow. So, so it's possible he got off the train? He's saying that he got off the right stop. Yeah. He was, you know, in the taxi portion of it. Yeah. Just took a wrong turn, or maybe he walked down the wrong street at the wrong time, got mugged, and that's it. Wow. The, the reason why I wonder about this yeah. is because you would think there'd be some evidence of him getting mugged. But the fact that he disappeared, the briefcase never found again, means there was some thought into covering up the tracks, right? That just doesn't strike me as something that uh, a, a petty thief would do, right? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So that's why to me, this doesn't seem as likely. No disrespect to Will and his family. But well, because that's why this one is unsolved. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here's from, uh, back from Gramtown, Cat, Catmo the Fuzzy Cat. Okay, q and A. I I must say I was mostly indifferent towards the hot dogga, but you really won me over with the plumples. Now the username makes sense. Hashtag ShaneyX. Catmo? Catmo the fuzzy cat. That sounds like somebody who enjoys the hot dogga. Yeah, it does. I did get a lot of feedback. Everybody loved the plumples. Spoilers. This week we have an incredible guest voice actor. And I was disappointed to find he informed me before this that this person's not gonna come in to live read it. I have it Because I actually do have the door locked, so I thought that that was gonna be Oops. kind of funny to have his guest actor try and get in and knock on the door, like, let me in, and yeah. I'd be like, no. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun. It's all right. Ryan, what's, uh, what do we got coming up this week on the season finale? Season finale, this episode is very dark. This is a, a very popular case on Reddit, on yeah. the internet. I'm mainly just because the details of it are so strange. All right. Yeah, it's it's creepy. All right. There well, that go. sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and send your questions into the BuzzFeed Unsolved uh, Facebook page and the uh, Instagram page. What are you doing? I'm just taking, I gotta queue up some stuff for the dogger. It's all good. Thanks for watching Postmortem this week. Okay, well that does. That, that. <clears throat> Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me, and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my buns. I changed that from you can, what was it, fuck off or something? Now it's more thematically, tie the buns. Fun, right? Good. In the jungles of the alien planet of Tamat Zero, Maisie the holographic corn follows Garce the Pluple to the supposed crash site of the starship Minestrone. Uh, so, what's your deal again, corn lady? Uh, I'm a hologram, dreamed by a witch. It's a shitty situation, but I'm in love with my dead hologram wife, so I'm going to keep existing until I can travel back in time and save her, and I guess, Earth. <laughs> Makes sense if you actually track the story, probably. Wait, you're from Earth? Wow, okay, yeah. Why, you've heard of it? Oh yeah, for sure. I heard about that place on the Space News. Yeah, guess some uh, big evil guy with a nasty glove is chewing it all up? Said he ate the moon as an appetizer. I'm guessing that has to do with all my shit. <sighs> Wonder if Earth's tasty. Big evil guy should consider eating this planet way things are going. Well, what do you mean by that? Eh, plight of the plupples. It's rough corn. I'm, I'm basically the smartest plupple in the galaxy on account of my papa teaching me how to read. And even I'm a straight up bonehead. The two of them pass an idle plupple. Oh, hey, Smeech. Plop, plop, plop. Oh, oh. It's actually making me feel sick. I actually feel physically <laughs> sick. All right, man. Hey, say hi to the grandkids. See, they're dummies. And they're all marching to the beat of old Dr. Goondis. Dr. Goondis? Hmm? Oh, yeah, some nutty old guy that made a home for himself here after the Space Wars. Used to be a real technical whiz. Charismatic as all hell. But he's been a little funny for a while. Plupples love him, though. Space Wars, huh? Wonder if this is the guy Mike Soup planned for us to meet. Uh, I hope not. Dude's cracked. Oh, hey, watch out for, with her next step, Maisie falls into a pit trap. <sighs> well, I mean, uh-oh. Scene change. Darkness, Maisie lands with a thud around her, a scuttling. 
Maisie ignites her glow stick and light spills on her environment. A darkened cavern. She is surrounded by plepples. They don't look like Garth's. They look dumb as hell. Oh, whoa there, folks. Hang on now. I, I'm a friend of Garth's. Can any of you... Look, I'm, I'm just trying to... The plepples all cool. Plop, plop, plop. Holy shit, you created Ewoks. Huh? No. You created your own version of Ewoks. These are different. You created one of the shittiest parts of the original no. trilogy. <laughs> oh my god. Look, I just I, realized that right now. What the? No wonder why I hate this even look, more than usual. I, oh. I can't. I, I need to get out of here and find my ship. Maisie picks up the nearest plucker. Please tell me there's a way out of here. There's a way out of here. The plucker explodes. The plucker's all cool. Suddenly, from the deep, a bellowing. Oh, are they going to eat her? What? What the? What? What is that? Is that Dr. Gundis? We still can't see the figure, but we hear it from the deep. Don't worry, I am Dr. Gundis. <laughs> it's you. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. It doesn't sound anything like me. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I am Dr. Gundis. <laughs> yeah, it's you. You're in the hot dogger now. Oh my God, you're a madman. Oh my God, he literally went through every one of the VO files that I've recorded for Unsolved, cut up little pieces of it to, to form this. You are insane. You are a madman. I can't believe, you, you know how much, you have any idea how long that probably took to do? Don't worry, I am Dr. Goodness. Anyway, tune in next week for the season finale of The Hot Dog, starring Ryan Bergara. What the fuck? We got him! No, you didn't get me. This just proves how crazy- We got him! This just proves how crazy you are. Don't worry, I am Dr. Goodness. Oh my god, you... I love it. I've never been more scared of you than in this moment. <laughs> how did you not realize that? Because I didn't think you'd be insane enough to comb through hours and hours of VO. I did. Wow.